Hey guys, what is up? This is First Two Weeks, and yeah, it's been a little while since I uploaded a video, and that's just because I've been super busy and wanted to play Barry and chance I get so I mean, even the chance I've been playing Barry, it hasn't really been for that much of a time. Because yeah, me and Reactor decided we're not gonna watch any videos on Barry, we're gonna completely figure out and everything ourselves, which kinda contradictory to being a YouTuber, I guess, but and it's made it pretty difficult to not just accidentally come across something, which I accidentally have come across some things, but not a lot. And so basically what I'm going to do in this video right here is to show you like a complete perk tutorial, everything you know about, you know about the perks. I mean, we do know enough about the perks that have been existing in previous maps before. But there is a new perk, which I'm not going to go right over right now, we'll do it a little bit later. The Elixir Aid, or Vulture Aid Elixir actually is what it's called. But right now we're going to show you how to get 7 perks at a time, anything more than 4 actually, because you, you can only buy 4 at a time. And every five rounds, when you come through Samantha's house, which is what we've been calling it, Samantha's house, because Samantha's voice is going through it, got these ghost ladies here, who are, I'm guessing Samantha, but yeah, this is what you just do, you just go through the house, and when you get to the other side of the house, you will actually get Samantha to keep following you, and a couple of them actually. Every five rounds, they should keep following you, and you kill a couple of them outside of her house, and once you kill them outside of her house, she'll actually drop a perk bottle, and you can do this once every five rounds, so 15 rounds, for three perks. So you could do this in rounds one, six, and eleven even, so I could do technically eleven rounds. You could get all three of the perks if you had enough money in the bank and you just went through straight away to get over here and everything. Because you do need to buy four perks before that anyways, so that way you can have a fifth perk because getting a free perk before you have four perks is kinda of pointless because it's just a random perk and you could go buy perks anyway, so it's not much of a deal wait big deal. So you see now I have seven perks. Another side note here, this isn't really about the perks, but to get back to the spawn, this is how you do it. There is a fountain here, you blast it open with something explosive like an RPG or a Reagan Mark II. I'm sure Reagan normal does it as well. But uh, one thing I do know, frag grenades do not do it, which is kind of disappointing. And <laughs> messing around with the paralyzer there, actually petrified by this one, I think I packed a bunch it. But yeah, that's how, and pack a punch is also through the maze I did not go through, I just kind of went through the very first beginning of it. You can actually fly through the maze of the petrifier over the doors, not over the hedges, so if there's a door in your way, you can fly straight over that. And yeah, you can even mess around and get back to the normal spawn, and get back to the LSAT even if the LSAT platform is still there, with a petrifier or a paralyzer, because you can just fly out there, it's pretty cool. So yeah, that is how you get 7 perks. Now let's go on to more information about Vulture Aid Elixir. Actually, as we're making our way over to the perk machine right now, there's one more thing I want to go over of how to get back to spawn. That is not it. You do not just blast the fountain open and the portal's there. The fountain I'm looking at right there, I actually broke that with the giant, so it would actually go again. So I broke the barrel on top of it, so it would actually flow again. You break it with the giant using booze. If you don't know how to do that, it's basically you just set yourself up so that you are facing the fountain. The giant's in the middle between you and the fountain, so that way... You're, fa you're facing the fountain, the giant's in between the fountain and you're facing you, and you can feed him booze, and then he'll just turn around and smash it open. So once that's smashed open, and the other fountain is smashed on the other end, over by Samantha, past the Samantha's house in the maze, then you can jump in, and then you'll go to spawn. And as you begin to see right now, I just drank the perk, and I'm actually able to see just about everything. I can see all the perk machines, their perk symbols are just glowing over there, juggernauts of, of the distance speak holes above me, and you can actually see guns on the wall as well, which is kind of cool. And the mystery box is probably the coolest feature of this. You can actually see the mystery box, so you know exactly where it's at. But if you're over here and the mystery box is all the way over the maze, it's actually too far to see with Vulture Aid, so you're actually going to need to go back all the way through the maze, and then you'll find you'll be able to get, see it again once it's in the maze. But for here, it's just too far away, so that's kind of a problem as far as trying to find the mystery box, but at least you'll know it's over there. And the maze is really a bad spot to have the mystery box. You basically only, only want to do that mid-round or have some really good guns over there and have plenty of ammo and you're probably going to want to hit the box if you have really good guns and plenty of ammo though so I mean it's kind of a real pain when it's over there we've actually had one game end like that because the mystery box is over there and we wanted to go get some guns the zombie died out as we ran away and yeah the game ended shortly after that while we were trapped in the maze with not very good guns and so yeah you can see all, once we're really close to the perk machines the symbol doesn't glow anymore and the uh, you can see guns on the wall by skulls and you can see potential spots for guns on the wall I don't think I have anything here, I think I drew them all on the wall with the chalk you can see the spots with two guns crossed with an, like an X and you can actually go draw it there with the chalk you pick up in the gunsmith or actually there's also one at the spawn Alright, and now we're going to go into another feature of Vulture Aid. I'm actually doing a real strategy here. I'm not going to post a strategy yet because I feel like it needs to be perfected a little bit better. I did make it to around 35, and then again to around 36. I, the round 35 one was just a terrible fail. And then around 36 when I died in 36, time bombed it back to 34 because that was the last time I put a time bomb down because that, that's the last time I had a max ammo. And 
<laughs> yeah, so I didn't even have the round 36 save. I had around 34 save for that game, so I actually made the round 35, and that is my high score. But the round 35 was just like the worst I've ever had in the history of zombies. I'll talk about that a little later, though, because I want to talk about Vulture Aid. As you kill a lot of zombies, and you can kill this one at a time, and they'll still drop things, but not every time. You can actually see zombies glowing with green smoke. Those ones will drop green smoke that disguises you and camouflages you from the zombies if you sit in it because apparently you smell like them, so they will not bother you. They'll go off and sit in a bunch of different locations, not all in the same one, so that it prevents them from being ray trained just extremely easily. So you see me sit in the green smoke here. You also see the vulture aid perk down there. You're seeing it glow green. It has this like green tornado thing coming off the top of it. That's what it kind of looks like. It's not a tornado, but that's what it looks like at least. And so that will disguise you from the zombies. They'll also drop two other things, which are the gold things on the ground. The money bags, which will give you small amounts of money and about like 5 to 10 points each. And then they will also give you the little, like, they're like sticks on the ground or something like that. And those will give you more ammo in the gun you're holding only, not in any other gun. So if you're using the paralyzer, kind of pointless to pick those up because the paralyzer already has infinite ammo. And so yeah, you're seeing me send the green smoke again there. That's pretty much it for this. And yeah, the round 35 strategy while I'm on this strategy, I'm showing you guys this strategy. This is a this is a pretty good strategy. It's pretty fast. I'm once again I'm trying to find the difference for combination really the best combination of safety and efficiency so we can get to those high rounds because that way we can get to the high rounds quicker and also not die before we get to those high rounds. So definitely gonna be working on that in the coming days here as long as I get enough time to. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for Vulture Aid. That's all there is to know about Vulture Aid basically. I don't know if there is any feature in the Easter egg because we have not done the Easter egg yet. We are. Figure out the entire easter egg also on our own, figure out this entire map, everything about it all on our own here, so it's going to be interesting and it should be fun. So I'll definitely post more easter egg stuff later as soon as we get more of it figured out. We've gotten like, I want to say like a third of the way through, but I really don't know because we don't know how far the easter egg goes. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this part of the video. So now let's go into PSG Flopper. Really cool perk, glad they brought it back, but they only brought like half of it back, so we're going to talk about that and go into that right now. But now we're actually going to go into PSG Flopper and how to get PSG Flopper. Actually, I'm going to lose it first here on accident because I was just going over this wall with the paralyzer. And you are going to hear the perk losing sound. So that is how you lose it. You basically get it the same as that way you lose it, which is kind of stupid. But you get it by jumping or off of buildings, or you can even fly around with a petrifier or paralyzer. You can actually just take fall damage. Like, I think that's like three times usually, and sometimes a little more. If you jump off a building three times in a row and you take fall damage, and without killing yourself of course, you can take a little bit of a pause in between to make sure you don't kill yourself. But with a petrifier or paralyzer also, you can also save yourself from taking fall damage that I just did there by shooting at the last second before you go down, or even just on your way down you can shoot it and it will just gradually let you down instead of taking a ton of fall damage. So if you're in the maze here, you actually can get a lot higher, I'm sure there's other parts of the map like this as well where you actually flash red screen here. I have permanent jug as well as the normal jug here, I believe. Actually, I might I might have taken it down, I'm not actually sure at this point. But anyways, I wouldn't go too high with it. This is not the greatest spot to do it, but I was just preparing for round 20 because I wanted to do the achievement first, surviving an entire round on round 20 inside of here. And I have the Petrifier as well as the Regan Mark II and Mustang and Sally. And Mustang and Sally, really, you do need PHC 4 if you're going to use it much, because or you have to be really careful with it and shoot it really far away. But I was just going to camp in a corner and that's how I got the round 20 achievement. And I did no problem at all. And you just saw it there, the green perk flash as well as a little bit of a sound. The perk flash is definitely what's more noticeable though. So now I do a PC flopper, I'm going to show you guys that in a second here. And we're just going to go through some gameplay of me doing this on round 20. It's, they actually spawned them really slow, surprisingly. Which is, I don't know, they actually really, sometimes they spawn really fast, sometimes they spawn really slow. It just depends, I guess. But you can see, yeah, I'm not taking any damage from it. And as I'm going through the round 20 and showing you guys me just doing that, I'm not going to go through the entire round, of course, that would take too long. But yeah, I'm going to explain my round 35 death a little bit more in detail. And let's go into that. Alright, now I'm going to explain the round 35 a little bit better, because I did say I was explaining it earlier. It's not that important to this video at all, but it's just kind of funny I figured I'd mention it here anyways. I'll also show the funny fail at the end of the video with me jumping into the fountain without first breaking the, f the fountain outside of Samantha's house in the main area with a giant. I didn't do that yet because we didn't know how to do that. So we knew how to do it, but we just didn't do it because we didn't know to do that. And so I'll show that fail at the end of the video. But yeah, the fail I had at round 35, basically I just completely failed just miserably. I was going really good the entire game, zero downs, pause it as soon as round 35 started, came back to a few hours later, and then just failed horribly. It, it, the down, I, the first time I had it was just kind of getting trapped, it wasn't the biggest fail ever. 
But then once I was down, my battery was, my batteries and my controller were already dying. And I knew that, so I paused it as I was down and I was reviving myself. So it says reviving for two weeks and whatever. And so I basically just paused it, pulled the batteries in my controller, and as soon as I did that, I hit the A button accidentally. Try to put the batteries back in my controller so I can pause the game again because this game doesn't pause when you have no batteries in your controller, unlike Black Ops 1 did with the zombies. And so as I was trying to put it back in, it respawned me back up and put me back up. I had a time bomb so I went completely fine and just won like maybe half a round probably. And yeah, I just failed miserably with that one. Pretty embarrassing, but I mean at the same time, I don't know. It was it was a decent round and decent strategy. I'll have to definitely perfect it a little bit better than I have so far. It's actually a pretty good running and gunning strategy as far as rig training and everything, but there's really not that much space to do it in this map, so it's definitely something that's more difficult. And yeah, if you've even seen this entire time here, you don't lose PhD unless you take fall damage, so you can just spray most things out of the ground. But it does take quite a bit of ammo to try to do this mid-round like this or just a round like this, and not kill the zombies all in one big rage train because with the Reagan Mark II being a three round burst gun, that takes a lot of ammo, especially if you're killing like one or two at a time, which that's what I'm doing a lot of the time, and same with Mustang and Sally, like, those are both meant to take out more than just one zombie at a time, so you're definitely running out of ammo pretty fast here. I mean, it's still not a problem though, I can still make it through the round with no problem, but I do go through ammo pretty fast during this. So yeah guys, that is pretty much it, and now let's go into the fail we had with trying to figure out where spawn was, and we thought, you know what, we could jump into this and maybe it's portal about to spawn, but it actually is a portal when you have it done right, and right here is just a big black hole, and so we just jumped into it. I'm going to go on that note, guys, so I will see you later, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will just let the commentary go here. I don't have live commentary myself doing this. I will in the future, actually, because I got an Elgato, and it has a live commentary feature. Just put live commentary straight in the video with the actual just video file, and so I'll, I will be doing that in the future, so I will have live commentary in the future. But yeah, for right now, here's just Reactor's voice and his reaction to me doing this so stupidly. Alright, see you guys later. Functionality of this machine cannot be explained by current scientific thinking. A fact that irks me considerably. I know I'm a this seems like an unnecessarily tedious diversion at this particular juncture. Oh, uh, should I sacrifice? <laughs> 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 Alright, now I have no choice but to kill him. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, should I get out of here first, actually? <laughs> Now we know that is not the way back to spawn. 